Hello, everybody. My name is Lori Souza, and I'm here with Topsy with Coinstructive. How are you doing today, Topsy? I'm doing great. How are you, Lori? Doing good. Doing good. Well, thank you for joining us again for our interview series on crypto scams. And i um, anxious to hear what scam we're going to talk about today. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here as always. And today we're going to be talking about the social media scam. Wow, sounds like that one is uh, running rampant, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because everybody uses social media now. So really, anybody can be a victim. Yeah. So uh, how would a crypto scam occur with social media? Right. I mean, it could take on different forms, but this is what we're seeing quite often. Um, we're seeing typically social media scams where the social media platform involves pictures. So this is not typically like Telegram or not necessarily WhatsApp either. So we're talking like Facebook, Instagram. These are two of the most popular platforms for this specific type of scam that we're going to be describing today. So these people have this, you know, on these platforms, people have their pictures, their, you know, and even videos sometimes. And you would find someone messaging you and this person would be someone that you know. So this is your contact, your friend on Facebook or your friend on Instagram sending you a message on the same platform. So you would absolutely feel comfortable exchanging a conversation or having a conversation with your friend on that social media platform, right? Um, wow. But what is unknown is that that person having that conversation with you is actually not your friend. It's someone who you actually don't know, but they've actually just created a fake profile with mm -hmm. a picture and the name of your friend. Wow. So uh, how does your uh, one of your friends know that their account has been hacked? No, your friends actually don't know. So two things. Thank thankfully, you mentioned, you know, account being hacked. So the one scenario is that your friend's account has actually been hacked. The second scenario is that they've just duplicated a profile of your friend, right? They've created a completely different profile using the picture and the name of your friend, right? So okay. in, if it's if it's an account that has been hacked your friend doesn't know they haven't yet come to a realization and probably they do but you don't know that your friend has been hacked and you're just you know you're just having a conversation with someone that you think is actually your friend and you know because of that your your trust you already have trust for this person so it's less work for this camera to kind of convince you because you already have a relationship with the friend and, you know, many times people would typically just, you know, chat, you know, on Facebook or Instagram. They don't necessarily pick up the phone to verify right, that they are right. speaking to a friend because, I mean, they've done this countless times on the same platform. So they are comfortable having that conversation already. Wow. And so it's actually a fake profile right. of, of the friend. And, uh, and then that person is what asking the victim or asking their friend for money right so typically they are they are not necessarily asking for money right away they are either introducing you to some investment that they stumbled upon or some scheme that they invested in and has given them 10 times their money in the space of one week two weeks one month whatever the case you know they're telling you a story that is that sounds too good to be true and they're telling you oh I'm, i made this much money investing in this program or on this website you should do the same basically and they're coaching you and guiding you on how to enter into the same investment fake investment that they've done and unknown to you you're not even talking to your friend you're talking to a fake person a scammer and you put your money there because you trust your friend but by the time you cannot get your money out that's when you come to the realization that you've been duped or by the time you actually pick up the phone to say hello friend um and about that thing that we were talking about about that investment we're talking about at that point you realize oh it wasn't even your friend that you were speaking to you've been scammed sadly. wow Wow. And so, so many people rely on social media now for communication 
And uh, for me, I guess I consider myself old school. I'm going to pick up the phone and verify, right? And just say, right. is this real? Let's have a conversation. Right. And so why is it that people rely on social media so much when it comes to sending somebody money? <laughs> I mean, I, I wish I could answer that question. I'm not necessarily old school, but I would, I would say that I would also pick my phone to make that call because now it involves my money. If we're just chatting about casual things, you know, that's fine. I don't necessarily have to verify. But if I'm going to have to send you money, I've had people, you know, message me on Facebook or message me on other platforms, and it involves me having to send money to the person. And I mean, these are accounts that I've actually interacted with in the past, but I would pick up my phone to say, is this really you? I want to hear the voice, you know, I have your phone numbers, so I'm going to give you a call, right? But I yeah. see that sometimes people don't actually have the phone numbers of their friends, you know, maybe they've met these friends online, maybe over an extended period of time, and they've kind of built a relationship already. And in some of these cases, these are actually genuine friends, but they just don't have the phone numbers of their friends, you know. But you can also, you know, call this friend using that same platform. If it's Facebook, there's a Facebook message, there's Facebook, you know, there's a, you can make a call basically using Facebook. I believe you can do the same as well using Instagram. So even if you don't have the phone number, try to have a voice conversation, a verbal conversation with this person to kind of verify if you're speaking with the right person, basically. Yeah. Wow. And so I, I remember a time about a year or so ago when my LinkedIn actually had a fake profile of me. Wow. And yeah. And so one of the things that I did was contact LinkedIn right. because I had no idea who was creating the false profile and I have no idea what messages went out. Right. Right. And right. so how does one, so I, I contacted LinkedIn in order to get that removed. Um, and so it didn't result in any damage, I don't believe. <laughs> and so how about the person whose profile has been copied? Um, how do they salvage? And usually it's people who are out there who are speaking up and who are, um, you know, influencers on right. social media. Um, how do they recover? It's hard. I mean, for you, you might have seen a few cases, right, where someone or some people, you know, recreated your profile. But yeah. sometimes we're dealing with some sometimes high profile people like celebrities, uh, people who are a bit, you know, popular. And those kind of people sometimes would have hundreds to even thousands of accounts in their names you know so how many how many are they gonna close down how many is facebook or instagram or you know whatever platform how many are they actually gonna close down it's hard because when you close one down another one springs up right so um yeah. so even though you know the victims or the the account the original owners of the account should definitely reach out to those platforms to close down those accounts but really sometimes you really can't keep up yeah um, especially so yeah. Like with the celebrities right that have exactly. more than one or two profiles uh, absolutely any. and so what does a victim find then some they ask them for money yeah so yeah. um at some point they would either ask you to make an investment into some idea that is stumbled upon or just ask you directly to send them money like they could tell you oh i'm currently traveling and i'm stuck my card is not working where i'm based can you help me with some funds in crypto or you know it could be any story the point is the red flag is when they ask you for funds you need to verify you know you need to pick up your phone and call this person you need to call and hear this person's voice if you're still not sure then you shouldn't be sending them funds. But if you're sure, if you're hundred percent certain that this is your friend, then I mean that's now your call, right? If you want to send them money or not. But typically, you need to. The recommendation is pick up your phone and call this person, just to verify. Whatever, as long as it involves you sending money in one form or another, yeah, call right. them. Right. Right. So uh, no, no friend is going to ask you to send them money via uh, social media, right? No real friend. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I should be able to send you the funds to your bank account. That's one of the things that I would do, right? Because I want to see your name pop up. I want to, <laughs> I want to yeah, be sure that the, the bank account is yours, right? And not yeah, that of yeah. some, some scammer. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, then what about WhatsApp and Telegram? Certainly, scams are happening on those platforms as well. Yeah, a different kind of a different kind of scam is definitely happening on WhatsApp. And sometimes you will just get like random messages from people that you have no idea who they are, where they're from. <laughs> you will just get a message. Uh, so, for example, I got a message on WhatsApp sometime recently saying, "Oh, I invested from somebody. I, I don't even know who they are. I don't know how to find my number. You know, just saying something like, "Oh, this is your profile. This, this is your." username and your password log into this account and start trading something like that you know yeah and the person maybe attaches a screenshot of how much they've made on that platform and they tell you oh we've already created a, a profile for you go oh. ahead and you know just log in and you even they could even say we've even made a generous you know like they've made a contribution to your account you have x amount of funds in your account and if you're vulnerable if you're gullible you would actually log in trying to scam the scammer by withdrawing the funds that it made that it deposited into your account but what you don't know is that by clicking on those links and opening those accounts or those platforms you are you know you've just baited yourself you've just set up your own account for um you've just made yourself a victim of a scam because basically you've you've been fished right and those people are going to have access to you your device, be it your mobile phone or your computer, sure. and they're able to access your phones in, in one way. Wow. So if somebody says log into this link or click here to finish setting up your account and you never set up that account, right. that's a scam. That's a big red right. flag, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you have no business with it because you never went to that platform. You don't even know them. You don't know the person who is messaging you. So why would you even click on the link? Right. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. they're just not, they didn't even send you a link. In some occasions, they're just chatting with you hello hi how are you you see a beautiful picture if you're a lady they will send you a really handsome dude's picture and they'll use that picture as their as their profile if you're mm -hmm. a guy whatever the case right they'll put up a picture that's really attractive for you to want to enter into a conversation with them they could even send you pictures of where they are dining right yeah. so they could yeah i've seen that that's that story <laughs> right where they will show you a picture of where they're having lunch you know and it could, typically it's in a community that is close to you. I don't know how they do this, but yeah, somehow yeah. they know where you live or they suspect or they try to figure out where you live by sending you pictures of, you know, diners or areas that are kind of within your vicinity that you can relate with. And that kind of makes you feel comfortable having a conversation with them. Wow. And so that might, uh, so with some of these red flags we're talking about, that might make a potential victim feel a little unsafe, right? <laughs> Knowing that they're close in proximity or <laughs> pretending to be close in proximity. Yeah, I wish that was the result. But in some cases, we'll see victims getting comfortable because they feel, oh, this person is close by. Actually, we can have lunch together. And it's an attractive picture, by the way. So why not? <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so uh, I, that that reminds me, I, I have received uh, some WhatsApp texts uh, from uh, beautiful girls right, right. <laughs> saying, hi, Robert, <laughs> I want to invest in crypto. <laughs> mm. So and I'm thinking, you know, this is just happening so much now. So what does a victim look for? How can a victim avoid this? um a number of ways first of all the, this person you're speaking with if it's the whatsapp you know telegram messages you, if you don't know them you never reached out to them why are you even having a conversation with them right. this is one common theme that we find among victims right they tell us like actually i don't remember how i met this person or they say something like this person just randomly reached out to me on whatsapp or on telegram why would someone randomly reach out to you and you build a relationship from there with someone you have absolutely no idea how they even got your number. That's a red flag. You shouldn't even start that conversation, you know, to start with, you know, right. and, it, and if it's the Facebook, you know, Instagram, you know, those ones that have like profiles, then you should be very fine, particularly when they ask you for money, you should be very fine if you're actually speaking to the person that you think you're speaking, you know, with. Yeah. Wow. So this is kind of an overlap, the social media scams, uh, an overlap of some of the other scams we've talked about, the romance scam and the investment scam. Right. 
yeah. right absolutely because if it's the whatsapp or telegram one they're going to try to build a relationship with you and try to tell you how much they are in love with you to get you to you know make some investment or part with some money in one way or the other so that's going to kind of lead down the romance scam pathway or alternatively they would introduce you to an investment that is lucrative profitable which is absolutely fake right so yeah the romance the the social media scam in itself the end goal is typically you know introducing you to an investment or you know getting you to get in love with them and send them money so yeah yeah wow and so i just want to bring up the human aspect of it this is right. that for some of our younger listeners who rely on social media or uh, make a connection with somebody on Facebook or Instagram and believe that they're their friend, um, you know, there's a, a, a new uh, definition of friend, right? Where it's right. somebody that you've never met or haven't had a face-to-face -face conversation with, but just relying on the pictures and the texts that are sent. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say for those uh, that have relied on social media as their friend network, uh, it's really important to really investigate a little bit more on, is this a real person that I'm talking to? And if they're asking you, um, you know, to send them money, that's that's red flag number one, don't do it. You know, Absolutely. get to know the person and an open your own crypto accounts, right? Don't rely right. on somebody else's, um, unless you need a little bit of help. That's something that Coinstructive can do, we can do and help, uh, direct people in the right uh, platform or the right. right system, the right wallet. And also uh, Coinstructive has a plethora of cases uh, that you worked. And so you, you have no problem being able to let them know what platforms have been scammed before. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, if, if anyone is in doubt and they reach out to us, we can absolutely guide them and tell them don't invest any money here. This is a fraud. We've seen this over and over again, or this is actually genuine. Feel free. Whatever the case, we're able to advise you on what to do. Feel free to reach out to Constructive and we're happy to offer our services. Now, you mentioned young people. Um, that kind of reminded me that, you know, on the other side of the spectrum is actually the elderly people. And we find that these people tend to fall victim a lot to all sorts of you know social media and romance and investment scams it's right. so sad I, I you know i can't kind of i can't understand why you would want to defraud someone who is you know retired who is just living on their pension yeah. um it's so sad but uh, uh the elderly people you know many times actually fall victim because sometimes they are more lonely than you know the average person right so they need company and the scammers know this very well and they take advantage of that you know if someone reached out to an elderly person who is lonely on whatsapp telegram facebook instagram whatever you know they're more inclined you know to have a conversation because they really don't have many people to to talk with and you get someone here who's calling texting chatting with you every day spending hours with you you get comfortable with them to the point where you send them money so be careful you know once it gets to the point where you have to send money then that's a major red flag at that point yeah thank you for mentioning that i do recall one of my clients uh he was in his early 90s and you know they're not uh i would say the um elderly aren't as familiar with social media True. and so that's the other aspect of it but this was through phone calls where somebody continued to scam him with phone calls and ask and saying they were a charity and they needed help and and he would send them money and actually believe that he was helping the person on the other end of the phone um and then it finally came to a point you know you don't know how you get yourself into these things it's like right. uh you know will you answer the phone for me this person won't stop calling me and asking me for money because i've already sent them money and i can't send them any more money <laughs> wow wow that so, is that is sad yeah so it can happen but i really appreciate your time today and us talking about the social media scams and uh everybody look out for those red flags if you need any help and verification on what's valid and what's not in the crypto world feel free to reach out to topsy at coinstructive absolutely and if you've been a victim already sad um that's sad that's that's heartbreaking 
but also feel free to reach out to us and we can carry out those investigations for you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you again for mentioning that. All right, everybody have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon with the next scam. See you next time.